Tom Cadell, Air Force veteran. Molly, Labrador retriever. A man and a dog who are saving each other's lives. A lady in my neighborhood was going to put her to sleep because she couldn't handle her, and uh, um, I took her in right away. Uh, I, we kind of bonded, and um, it uh, we just kind of helped each other. They're perfecting that with the Train a Dog, Save a Warrior campaign. And then release and praise. It's a program that lets veterans train with their dogs in the hope of relieving the symptoms of PTSD. It's a training in trust. It, it's, I don't know, it, it's, I, I kind of feel like I can let my guard down a little bit because she's watching for me. Like, I don't know, like maybe she's got my back or something. I, uh, I can, uh, I can get out, you know, around people. Um, I don't isolate as much as I used to. Bart Sherwood is one of the people behind Train a Dog, Save a Warrior. The veterans and warriors that come to our program, apply for the program, the majority of them have the invisible wound, the PTSD, the military sexual trauma survivors, the traumatic brain injuries. Uh, you don't see any scars on them outside, but inside there is damage as a, as a triple amputee. He says with so many of these vets, there's a similar scenario. When they've entered the military, no matter what war they've been in, they're given a uniform, they're given a weapon, and they're told that the person next to them is their battle buddy. But Bart adds that when they return home from deployment... The thing they give up is that battle buddy, and there is no replacement for what they've seen or have their back covered all the time. Their families can't do it, their friends can't do it, and they're left to where it's pretty much they're by themselves and, and that hypervigilance and that scared feeling all the time comes out. The dog gives them a non-judgmental, unconditional being that's by their side and just wants to do everything they can with them. And the results can be amazing. Robert Morrison, a 20-year Army vet, couldn't be in a crowd of people. But now with his dog, he can. And when she sees me getting a little bit uh, uh, on edge, she wants attention, and you focus your attention on giving her attention, and and uh, then you th you forget about the people around you and all the things that are around you. Michelle Montsevales has seen the same in her husband Martin since he's been training with Loretta. He's less anxious, less stressed. He's more calm. She just knows when to come and calm him down. The dog nuzzles or touches that person to pull him back to thinking before he gets into a full-blown flashback or anxiety attack that here we are in San Antonio, we're at home someplace, we're not deployed, you don't have to worry about it. Bart says the training is pretty basic, 15 to 20 weeks. Leave it. The first eight are on obedience. Then it gets more specialized, using a dog's natural ability to sense stress, sweating, changes in blood pressure. Make your dog sit. Carolyn Kieser says many dogs learn to wake up their partners from nightmares. And when the training is over, they are certified service dogs. This is what dogs were meant to do. They're meant to work with people. And to see the dogs, they have this life, and, and the warriors benefit so much from it. It's, I can't tell you how rewarding it is. Rewarding may be an understatement from Tom Cadell. Remember he told us he saved Molly from being put down? Well, he says Molly saved him from eventually killing himself. I just hope that I'm worthy and uh, uh, capable enough of earning what she's providing. And uh, um, I'll, uh, but I'll definitely be with her till, uh, uh, till either one of us quits breathing because uh, this, uh, this has saved my life, it really has.